What's up? Just as much as I got. Cheers. <laughs> So when I was a little kid, one of our favorite meals was a meal we started calling farm breakfast. It was just the breakfast we were gonna eat before we went out on the farm. And we found, um, later, that I found it was almost perfectly balanced. All the fats you need, all the proteins you need, and all the carbs, the good natural carbs that you need to get you through the day. And we would eat this early in the morning, and man, we would fill up on it. We'd have a pile of this stuff, and we'd just scarf it down. And we had to because sometimes I'd go out on the, the tractor and I'd be out on that tractor all day. I'm not kidding you. I'd get up early in the morning and I'd drive tractor or combine or swath or whatever it was we were working. I'd drive it till the night and sometimes you'd just hope mom brought you a sandwich. And if she didn't bring you a sandwich, man, you were glad you stocked up on farm breakfast. So I want to show you how to make farm breakfast. You need a pound of your favorite kind of sausage. We just do this regular Jimmy Dean, a pound of that. And we don't like it super potatoey. that's a word. So I'm only gonna put four, but if I was cooking this for my family with a pound, I'd probably put five or six. Yeah, well, we did, We have to double this when we do our family because we got some teenage boys and about a million kids. So. <laughs> but I'm gonna put four in because I like it more about this and the cheese and the eggs. So, and, and Lindsay loves the eggs. But I'll bet you need about a dozen eggs. We'll probably put a dozen eggs in it just for us too, but we'll have it for a few days. Need some cheddar jack or just cheddar, whatever you like. Some salt and paper, pepper, and then I know this should be the, the good old olive oil, but I try it and it spoils it. I don't like it as much because it doesn't remind me of being a kid. So good old fashioned canola oil will do you. And besides that, those are all the ingredients you need for a really filling breakfast. Let me show you how to make it. I don't peel the spuds. I just like to keep the skins on them. When I was a kid, mom and dad used to tell us that all the nutrients were in the peels. Now, as I got older, I learned that isn't necessarily so. Yeah, is it? No, <laughs> it's not necessarily so. That being said, somehow I still believe. So I like them. I leave the skins on and it makes them taste better to yeah. me. After I get those spuds washed, what I'll do is I'll take my take my knife and I'll start cooking this right off the bat. In the olden days, I used to think that the only way to do this was you had to cook up the meat and take the meat out of there, you know? And then once you got your meat out, then you could do it. Um, now I know you can cook them together. I'll put this on right about 300. 300 seems to cook it best for us. That's my favorite spatula. This is the farm breakfast spatula. We don't cook it with anything else and I will feel ripped off if I don't have the farm breakfast spatula. And I just kind of like to wipe that around. Now the thing about the sausage is it doesn't give enough oil. You'd think that sausage, that would give a lot of oil. Unless you've been working with sausage a lot. It's bacon that gives off all the oil. So you're gonna need some extra oil but I won't put that in until we get the potatoes in it. Yeah, so this is our little skillet. When, when the whole family's here, it's just me and Lindsay today, but when the whole family's here, it takes a, an extra special skillet. And I just slice these uh, kind of big pieces. I like mouthfuls of them when I eat them. So for me, it's like, I just kind of do them in thirds here. Nothing fancy, not a chef. As you can see, I'm no cook. But, I have made a little farm breakfast before. Now that usually takes the longest of all that we do because I'll have 10 potatoes to go through. See the meat kind of outnumbers the potatoes in this one, and that is almost never true. <laughs> I mean, this is where it says it's getting dry on the bottom. You can be pretty generous with the oil. 
because the eggs are going to soak it up. So if it kind of sits in oil a little bit, it'll help it cook. Put the, when we get the eggs in there, it'll soak it up a little bit. We want it nice and oily. Oh, but that's not healthy. Shut up. We're out working today. We're going to go do some stuff. We're going to have a long, long day. So we are going to get a belly full. At this point, I put on a heap of saw. I know, that seems like a lot. But I'm going to do it again when we get the eggs on. Now, Dad does this wrong. <laughs> My pop will put onions in it and peppers in it and all other bunch of other stuff to ruin it and he's just wrong about that so this is perfect the way that is we're just gonna let that cook for a little while until the potatoes get tender and i'm going to keep stirring it and stirring it making sure everything kind of gets mixed in unbelievably those potatoes will they'll cook about the same time that that sausage will so we'll cook that down a little bit and i'll show you where to go from there now we can break some of that. Break some of those chunks down a little bit. I like a big chunk. Thing is, is when we feed the kids, we got little mouths and they have a hard time getting around those big chunks. But since it's just me, me and Lindsay today, yeah man, we're gonna eat some big chunks. Listen, you gotta come with us to get Christmas trees this year. You have to. That was so much fun last year. We slept in a foot of snow and it snowed overnight. So when we pulled in, we made this in a Dutch oven. And it's really simple. So we just, you know, we put it all in there and we made it up and had a whole pile of it. We ate it for dinner that night. And then the next morning was blisteringly cold, but fun. And then all we did is started the fire and threw it on there, warmed it up and ate a, got a big belly full. And, Mmm, yeah, that was a good day. I was, I was full all day. And that lent to chopping down some Christmas tree. Hey, come with us this year. I'll take you out there and I'll show you where to get them. I'll show you how to get them. We'll camp overnight in the snow, I know, but it's fun. You'll love it. We'll, we'll put up how to do it later. Because farm breakfast needs a little willy. Just be honest about that. I don't know what you're laughing about. Shame, shame on me. All right, it's getting pretty close. So now I'll just find a big piece. Stick him out there to cool. Let's we'll see where it's at. I always turn the heat down because it splashes if I don't. This bothers me. Oh, that will not be there. Not quite. Banjo now. All right, now. That's getting close, I can tell. Pick the biggest one. Let it cool down for a minute. Oh, we're getting close. Mmm. Okay, that one's just a little bit crunchy. And I mean just a little bit. If you go too far, they get kind of dry and they'll stay too dry. But if you leave them a smidge crunchy, just like a, you could eat that if you wanted to. It does, it's not raw, it's just crunchy. Then by the time we get the eggs cooked and we get the cheese melted, that thing will be just juicy and beautiful. So we're there, we're gonna add the eggs now. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Where'd it go? We're eating it. Okay, four down. Four's not enough. Looks like it is. Everybody's like, Neil, four will do you. You're wrong about that. It seems like enough right there, Neil. I know. Now we got six. That's a half a dozen. Eight, what do you like? Is that gonna be good? Let's go one more just, just because we can. It wanted to be right there. Can you heat back up? Now these guys, they got to be salt and pepper too. Now I just break all the yolks. 
And while it's runny, I like to mix it all together so every little piece gets bathed in some egg. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. And see all that oil that was in there? It's all gone now. Soaked up into those eggs. It's ready to go stick on your ribs for the rest of the day. You can work, work out, go play, go on a bike ride. Now, some parts of the world, they think that's good. They're all done, but those people are what I like to call Wrong. There's one more step. To do this right, it needs to have some melty bits. It just needs a little more stick to your gut. A little more stick to your rib. Not that those potatoes won't. Not that all that oil won't. Not that that sausage won't. Those eggs. Mm -hmm. All right, that's about how I like it. And we'll let that melt. And we will be ready to go in five minutes. Okay, I have a very good feeling about this. This is the most important part. This is the part you can't rush. Like, you'll go put that cheese on, and you'll get kind of greedy, and you want to have your farm breakfast, and you'll pull, and let all that heat off of there, and you gotta sit there longer. And then the cheese doesn't melt down into the corners, and it doesn't get crispy on the very edges like you like. I think we got it. You can't see. It's just, you get one pull. You get one pull. Here's the reveal. Oh, yeah, that is perfection. So it'll make enough for five or six of you, um, unless you got teenage boys, and then it's only going to make enough for you, and then him, or them. <laughs> it's delicious. From here, just serve it up. <laughs> Look at that. That is some meal. That's going to take care of you most of the day, right? And then you'll have some. Oh, yeah. So happy. Man, if you do it right, you'll just bathe it. Ketchup or some bacani sauce. Nothing fancy, but filling as hell. That's, that's a good meal. You can't do better than this before a good long day of farming or work in the field or whatever else you got active going on. That'll take care of you. Neil, is this super healthy for you? Yes, it is.